Okay, boys and girls, we are at chapter 10, Candy Cigarettes. Where would we go? How fast could we ride? The next day, questions about the moped skimmed through my brain like a deck of shuffling cards. I struggled to stay as chill as sticks. Sticks brought us candy cigarettes from some planes. They came in a small box with old-fashioned pictures on it. A broad, smiling white man with his hair all slicked away from a distant, from a distinct side part. Just like Dad, read the label under his square chin. I didn't know they made these anymore, Bobby Jean said. I know a guy, Sticks said. Of course, Sticks knew a guy. That was exactly the kind of cool as heck thing that Sticks would say. We were sitting in the grass on the rise at the edge of the school playground. This was within our radius. Usually, Bobby Jean and I would be running up and down the slide or something, but Sticks thought it was fun to just hang. So we stared out over the lonely playground equipment discussing business. How long till it's ours? I blurted out. Patience, grasshopper, Sticks said. I gr I grinned at the double meaning. I thought them about my vision of the moped as a flaming grasshopper. If we're going to do this, we're going to do it right, Stick said. Patience was really not my strong suit. I figured out what to do with the fireworks, Sticks added. Found a guy we can unload them on. Yeah, Bobby Jean said. Who? Sutton wasn't exactly a big town. We might know the guy too. I'll show you. We'll go over there tomorrow morning. We can't go in the morning, I said. We've got chores, Bobby Jean added with Corey. We're still paying off the fireworks, I reminded Sticks. Sticks toyed with the cigarettes between his fingers. Bobby Jean's was half gone already, crunched up between his teeth. Mine was turning needle sharp against my tongue like a candy cane. Someday, maybe I'll figure out how it suck, how to suck it down evenly. Sticks twirled the candy cigarette over his knuckles. Your old lady's really keeping the jam on you, eh? Yeah, man, I said, leaning back and kicking out my legs. My elbows landed in the soft grass with a jolt and the cigarette broke in half in my mouth. I pinched the clean end tight with my lip to keep it from falling and clamped my tongue against the roof of my mouth to keep from choking on the pointy end. So we'll go in the afternoon then. Sticks appeared to be studying the head of a clover. He didn't notice my flopping around. Bobby Jean noticed, but he didn't say anything to call me out. Where will we go first? I mused aloud. Where do you want to go? Stick said. How far can we ride? As far as we want. All the way to the horizon. I imagine us zipping across the California sand and planting our toes in the ocean. No, really, Bobby Jean said. Can we go as far as Indy, I said. Sticks laughed. Indy? My mind flashed to the Children's Museum. Even the most ordinary kids in school got to go there. According to the pictures, there was a dinosaur climbing up the outside of the building. That I like to see for myself. Sticks shook his head. You want to stay in our own backyard. We haven't been to Indy much, I admit it. Much, Bobby Jean said. We never leave Sutton. True, embarrassing, but true. Sticks tapped his candy cig against his lips. Why is that? Dad, Bobby Jean and I spoke in unison. He sounded matter of fact. Me, fiercer than I meant to. When Dad stopped signing our field trip permission slips, he stopped a lot of other things too. We hadn't left town since I was a baby. I barely remember it. The world is a dangerous place. We're safe here. People know us. Sticks nodded. Easy. I'll get you to Indy and show you the sights. That's a promise. Bobby Jean fidgeted nervously. My whole chest warm and expanded. 
too full of mm, something. Six plucked a clover blossom from the grass. The round, whitish brown bud seemed to wilt as he lifted it. But that was just how they always looked. Granddad, Granddad says you can't eat, the, eat those. I told him, Sticks might have all the big city knowledge, but I knew all kinds of stuff about small, stupid plants. Mom says we shouldn't, Bobby Jean added. They sprayed the ground with pesticides, pesticides and stuff. Huh? Six said. He popped it into his mouth. What the heck, right? Oh, yeah, I said casual as anything. We can't tell you anything you want to know about the local fauna. That sounded impressive. I thought local fauna? Flora, Stick said, absently twirling another clover stem. What? Plants are flora. Fauna is animals. We can tell you about both. Bobby Jeans almost covered the clunking sound of me being an idiot. We once saw a squirrel do a backflip from those power lines into that maple tree. I nodded toward the place where it had happened. Stick's brow went up. Sure did, Bobby Jean agreed. Circus fauna, I joked. Sticks cracked a smile. He ended by cruising down the slide. I added, that part wasn't true. But Sticks was smiling. Spread eagle, Bobby Jean confirmed. Sometimes we were totally in sync. A well-oiled machine of total bully ho uh, bull hockey, like when we had to cover for each other with mom. I would have smiled at Bobby Jean, but not in front of Sticks. We exchanged a glance. Bobby Jean wasn't smiling either. He knew. You'd be surprised how much there is to do around here, I continue. Bobby Jean nodded sadly. We used to have snails. We used to have snail races. Sticks gnawed at his candy cigarette. How, how'd that go exactly? Damn slowly, I said. We haven't checked on them in a while, come to think. Bobby Jean made like he was going to get up and go somewhere. I wonder who's winning. Bobby Sticks cracked up. If you ask me a day or two before then, what the best feeling in the world might be, I wouldn't have known what to say. I wouldn't have known to say it. Make it six Malone laugh. Okay, boys and girls, that is the end of chapter 10. We're going to read chapter 11 as well. <clears throat> chapter 11, Polenta. Six Malone, huh? Mom said. She stood at the stove, stirring tomato sauce around chicken meatballs. Yeah, I said, he's the greatest. We've been going on about him for a while, leaving out some specific deep specifics, of course. Bobby G and I hovered around the stove like pigeons, waiting for breadcrumbs. She always made three tiny meatballs with the last dab of meat. They cooked faster then the rest, and she would let us spoon out eat, spoon out one each. The last one was for her, supposedly, but we never saw her eat it. It was always there one second, and then the next. Mom, the kitchen, the kitchen ninja. Mom rolled meatballs over with the spatula. They smelled so good. I leaned into the garlic and herb laced stem. Mom eased me back with her stirring elbow. An older boy. Her voice was a little spicy, like the sauce. How much older? 16, Bobby Jean said, and he's been everywhere. Hmm. Mom nudged him out of the way, too. On the back burner, a pot of polenta simmered and popped. Tiny yellow volcano burst. He's been all over Indy, I told her even to the Children's Museum. It was never too early to start a campaign. Mom shot me her trademark hush-up look, maybe because Dad strolled into the kitchen right then. But my brain doesn't always work so well when I'm hungry. 
If we went into the city, six could show us around, I said. No sons of mine have cause to go into the city. The fridge clinked open as dad reached in for a can of pop. Bobby Jean shot me a warning glance. I swallowed my next words. Whatever they would have been, choked them down so hard my throat hurt. Bobby, dad returned to the living room. Okay, mom said, get your spoons. We greedily scooped the little, the littles out of the pan and blew on them. Good, we declared. When I looked back, sure enough, mom's tiny meatball had disappeared too. How much longer, Bobby Jean asked. His stung was probably growling in earnest now like mine. The tiny meatball was a tease. One of you can whisk the polenta, mom said. The other one can put out the bowls. The wide ones, okay? We went for the cabinet and Bobby Jean took up the whisk. Oh, honey, not quite so much butter, mom ch chided. Bobby Jean had dumped a whole stick into the polenta and was trying to whisk it in. More butter is better, I chirped in a fakey voice as I lined up the bowls on the counter. That's what Grandma Noni always used to say. Mom smiled at me over her shoulder, her eyes full of love and sadness in the whole world all at once. Bobby Jean stabbed at the butter with the whisk. See, it's melting, he said. It'll be fine. As soon as he took the pan off the heat, the polenta started to firm up. Mom leaned over and stretched to kiss him on the forehead. He was almost as tall as her now. Wow, that was weird. Me, she could still kiss on the top of my head without stretching. She wrapped her spatula arm around me, squeezing and planting a wet one on my hairline. Gross, Mom, she laughed. Bobby Jean bored over the polenta. Go get your father, she told him. When we were alone, the throat burning words tumbled out of me. Why is he like this? I opened the silverware drawer so I wouldn't have to look mom in the eye. He's doing what he thinks is best for our family. It's our job to keep you both safe, mom paused. In a world where that isn't always a given. It's sudden, I said. What's going to happen, sweet boy? Mom smoothed her hand over my hair. There are a lot of angry people out there. I folded my arms. Dad watches too much news. That's true. The silverware clattered from my fingers to the bowls. Sticks isn't like that, I whispered to the forks. Everything's different for him. Mom took me by the chin. Listen to me, Caleb. She said her voice as creamy as the hot polenta. I want to meet this Sticks Malone. Okay, boys and girls, that is the end of chapter 11. All right, now we're on to answering our discussion question.